Vanessa, would you like to lie down on the couch on your back with your head on the pillow? Okay, thank you. Okay, so you haven't had core therapy before, have you? No. So I feel privileged. Thank you for coming and trying it out. I love treating people for the first time. I feel like they're all tiny little challenges. Oh, I'm excited too. <laughs> oh, bless you. So, first of all, we're going to do some kinesiology. Have you heard kinesiology before? No. Ah, okay. So kinesiology is muscle testing. So it's like me having a little conversation with your body and your subconscious. And I'm going to ask you lots of different questions and your body will reply with your muscle tests. Okay. okay. So first of all, can you raise an arm for me? No, nice. And I'm going to push here and you're going to resist me and hold up your arm and hold. Okay. Can you raise the other one? I'm going to push and hold. Okay. Can you raise a leg? I'm going to push here and hold. Nice. And the other one. And hold. Okay. Now we're going for two. So if you could raise arm and leg. I'm going to push with both. You're going to resist me. Hold nice and strong. And hold. Okay. And the other side. And hold. Okay. So... I'm detecting a little bit of weakness there. I don't mean that you are weak, I'm just mean this particular test. So I'm just going to try a few things that that could be. So I'm going to pull your hair. Now can you raise arm and leg again? I'm going to push with both and hold. Okay, it's not that. So you're not dehydrated. I'll take that back for you again, sorry. And now, with this hand, can you upturn your finger? You have just washed your hands, so yeah. are you happy about putting your finger in your mouth? Oh, yeah. And then touch the roof of your mouth at the back of the dome. So not the sicky place, but just in front of that, the back of the dome. Yeah, are you touching the skin? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then raise an, uh, an arm and leg again. I'm going to push and hold. Okay, it's not that, okay? So I'm just going to test one other thing. Can I have a little look at your tummy? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Sensitive or ticklish? Sensitive. Okay. With two fingers, can you come and press there for me? Okay, so that's you pressing now, so it should be all right. Yeah. Okay, arm and leg up again. I'm going to push, you're going to hold up nice and strong, and hold. Okay, so we're not holding there either. So you can relax your hand, and actually, can you use your hand now to put it just across your forehead? Yeah, and then raise arm and leg again. I'm going to push, you're going to hold up nice and strong, and hold. Okay, we've got a strong result. So... You may remember, remember I said that I was going to look at four different things. One is dehydration. You weren't dehydrated. The next one is that one. It's called an SBS. It's in the head and it's really important, but it wasn't that one. Another one was here in your tummy that was sensitive, called the ICV, the ileocecal valve. It wasn't that. And then hand to forehead, you touched your frontal bone, which is all to do with stress. <laughs> and we retested this test here, which is called an Ipsy test. Ipsy is a, an English word that means one side of your body. So Ipsy that side or Ipsy that this side. And it went strong. This is your body and your subconscious saying to me, Help me! <laughs> Help me! I have a little bit of stress going on at the moment and I could do with some help. So, that's like, it's like I'm writing a shopping list for you and that's 
at the top of the shopping list. There will be some other things, but when I'm treating you, I'm going to be bearing that in mind okay. quite predominantly. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so would you agree that you feel a little stressed? Do you have a lot going on? Yeah. Do you have a busy life? Yeah. Um, and you, lots of juggling balls in the air, you feel like you're having to do a lot and please people and yeah, okay. I will help you. You will go away from here feeling a lot better. Thank you. Right, we're going to carry on with some tests. Can you raise this arm again? And this leg over here, your left leg, I'm going to push with both. You're going to hold up and hold. Okay, we're going to do the same again this way around and hold. Strong, you see the difference? So it was this arm and leg that weren't as strong as the other side, so it's going to be a joint. So I'm just going to have a little feel of these six joints to see which one it is. So I'm just feeling into your right shoulder. Can you raise this arm for me? I'm going to push here, you're going to hold up nice and strong and hold. Okay, I'm just going to feel into the elbow, raise again and hold. Nice. Just going to feel into the wrist and hold. Nice, now you're nice and strong there. So I'm just going to have a little feel of your left hip. Raising that arm again and hold. It's just starting to drop here. Yeah. And the knee, lovely knee. Raising again and hold. Lovely, that's good. Into the ankle. Raising again and hold. So you're getting an essence of what kinesiology is now. So you can see that sometimes you're strong, sometimes it's obvious that the, the muscle is weaker yeah. and that's where your body is telling me this area needs help, needs a bit of attention. Yeah. So I'm going to have a look at the hips now because this one came up. So I'm going to have a look at the whole of you. Could you just move your hair from your front so I can see your clavicle? Lovely. Lovely. Feeling into your hip bones, your knees, ankles. Yeah, you can see that one toe was pointing slightly more that way. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at the orientation of the feet because that tells us about the hips. Also, the level of the knees level of the ankle bones, even a millimetre tells us what's going on there, the level of the hips and the clavicle. Sometimes people have their head slightly to one side, yours is just slightly to your right, but only minutely, but we look for all of that with core therapy. So I'm just going to have a little feel into the hip. Can you raise this arm again? I'm going to push and hold. Yeah, just, slight, so just slightly shaky. And then down on the right hip. Coming up again and hold. Nice. Just have a look at the orientation, whether it's higher on one side. And hold. Lovely. And the other way. And hold tiny bit and then whether they are pulling apart and hold. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to say that. So I'm just going to update my notes. test again, this one and the leg as well. I'm going to push with both and hold, okay, and 
turn to the other side and hold. Okay, we're just going to have a little feel behind you. Just relax down, relax. And then I'm just feeling into the side of the sacrum. Feels a little bit sore there. Yeah, sorry. Okay. And hold. Yeah, stronger. Just going to come round and feel the left. Not as bad? Not as bad. Mm. And hold. And we're still going down something here and I might not have been quite in the right place. Sorry, relax down. Yeah, that's it. And again. And hold. There we go. Okay. Right, we're getting there. So... more hip tests because I think there's something with the hips. So can you put two fingers on your pubis symphysis bone which is the bone dead centre of your pelvis, a hard bone, quite low down, probably lower than that, hard oh, bone, bit. yeah, and yeah. push to the couch rather than to your feet, yeah, and then raise an arm all the way. I'm going to push here and hold strong okay so it's intact you can let go that's a really good sign for your pelvis okay yeah it's really good now another one can you put your soul towards your knee by bending your, this knee outwards lovely now can you raise this leg up for me yeah a little bit more i'm going to push here you're going to hold up and hold nice you can do that and the other way around Raising the leg, I'm going to push and hold. Okay, not quite as strong. You can let that go. So that was your left hip again. Yeah. Okay, so what the ballet test that we just did was is test whether the hip is happy opening. Yeah. So I will definitely be working on the hips. Um, just trying to think what else I want to do before you turn over. Can I have another little feel of the tummy? Yeah, yeah. Do you have quite a sensitive tummy normally? Um, or Sensitive as in like with food or? Mm, digestion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's because with all of us, all of our health, it's really important that the digestion is smooth and flowing and good and not restricted in any way, you know? Um, yeah, I'm just sensing that that's a little bit tight, so what I'd like to do is just, there's a valve here, and just open that valve for you. Okay. Um, it's just a strange feeling, it's not necessarily painful, it, it's just a little bit odd. Okay. Is that alright? Yeah. So can you give me three nice long breaths? So your your body is put. Oh, that's really good. That's a really good sign. A, li a li little tummy grumble. L literally a grumble saying, "Get away from me." <laughs> um, yeah. So it's really good to open the ICV because if we have tension, wherever our tension is, it might go to our abdomen, and then things seize up and. If we eliminate from here, we're eliminating stress as well. It's very much to do with it. Um, there's another valve over here I wouldn't mind having a look at. So I'm going to check the same place but on the other side of the abdomen. Is that the same sensitivity? Yeah. Is it ticklish? Or? No, it's like sensitive. Yeah. Painful or? Closer to painful than ticklish. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Do you have massages on your tummy? Not, not very no. often, no. no. Okay, yeah. I mean, I presume if you massaged your tummy, you'd be able to tolerate that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I would encourage you to do that. Because okay. if other people can't massage your tummy because it's sensitive, yeah. then your tummy needs... You, it to know that you're looking after it and okay. you've got its back, you know, that you know that it's tight and that it needs to relax. And I think it would be a really good thing if you learnt to massage your own tummy. Okay. On YouTube there are probably some very good self-massage. In fact, I might have put a couple on there. Have a look at my have channel. Have a look. <laughs> Um, okay, so is this getting better? It is. Mm, okay, so it's three much better. Oh, good. Three nice long breaths for me again. Oh, it's much better on that side. That wasn't as bad, was no, it? That's okay, all. all right. Okay, I think you can turn over. How's your temperature, Melissa? Are you warm enough? Do you want some heating on? Um, I feel just just about right. Yeah, the bed's really nice. And yeah, warm, the, so. the heated bed. But I can put more on, and I might be putting some hot towels on you shortly. Oh, that'd be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Arms down by your sides if that's comfy for you. Okay, so can you bend a knee? Yeah, keep going. Can you bend the knee? Uh, sorry, can you raise the knee off the couch? Right, I'm going to push here. You're going to hold up and hold. Okay, so as you can feel, you raise the knee about a centimetre off the couch. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's not as strong as it could be, because what we're testing is this muscle here, the glute max. And I'll tell you what that means in a moment. If you could bend this one now, raise it off the couch. I'm going to push here and hold. Okay, so both of those were not as strong as they could be, so I'm just going to have a little look at this lovely bone here, called the C2. Cervical 2 and it's a meaty bone, it's a really big one, but it can be quite sensitive in people if our necks are stuck. Does that feel sore? Um, a little. A little, okay. I'm just giving it a little TLC so it knows it's on the shopping list. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at your sacrum now. So, could you put your little finger to your thumb? Yeah, I'm going to try and pull them apart and you're going to keep them together and hold. Nice. So I'm just going to feel different parts of your sacrum and then I'm going to come back to this area here. Little finger and thumb, I'm going to pull and hold. Okay, a little bit more difficult. And the lower part and again and hold. Nice. And again, and hold. Okay. And again, and hold. Okay, so some of those were quite difficult to do. So I'm just going to have a little feel of your sacrum and tell your sacrum everything's all right and it can relax and go back into its normal orientation. So this is a Chinese massage called Tui Na and it's performed through clothes. Oh, that's a really good sign. Your tummy's rumbling again. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Oh, it's going again. It's really good. Well, yes, it's lunchtime. It means you're hungry. <laughs> but 
also, it shows you're relaxing and you're accepting the healing. You know, quite often clients get quite uh, embarrassed, I suppose, that their tummy is rumbling and they, you know, they sort of apologise for it. And I say, no, it's, I'm flattered, it's a good thing. It shows you're trusting me and you're relaxing, you're letting go and your muscles are all chilling out. So this tweenar is a really useful way of not only me checking out your body, feeling for any cool or particular heat in any area of your back and pelvis, shoulders and neck, but also it, I can check out where there might be any particular tension, so where the vertebra maybe stuck and not moving fluidly under my hands. And of course it's part of the treatment, so the more I do of this, the more back will let go, circulation will be able to pump more fully through the body, bringing oxygen and nutrients to the organs and muscles everywhere in your body that needs those motorways open. How's the pressure? Is it okay? Mm, lovely. Good. So the sacrum can actually take quite a lot of pressure because it's five bones fused together. So I'm applying quite a lot of pressure in a downwards direction. And this really helps the pelvic orientation so that if there are any muscles and ligaments that are pulling the pelvis over to one direction so it's twisted, then there's a good chance that they will let go and just let the pelvis come back to its proper place. So I'm feeling quite a lot of tension between the scapula, so just above the bra line, just between the scapula, the shoulder blades. And of course, if the back is tight, around here, the lower area, is not going to help the digestive and abdominal area, like the liver and the digestive organs, the excretory organs. So this will be helping everything in the torso. So I'm just going to do another couple of techniques on you just to help the back before I do that. This is called a wing stretch. So just relax your elbow, lovely. Lovely, so I'm just picking up your wing, your angel wing. And this helps to release, loosen the shoulder and the upper back. Fantastic. Well done, that was great. So that shoulder should feel a lot looser now. <laughs> These techniques tend to work straight away. You can feel the uh, benefit of them immediately. see the shape of the back is loosening as well. That looks a lot better. 
feels so much lighter. Oh, good. So this is what we call the drunken walk. Walking down your back with the heel of my hands. Feeling the ribs and the spine shifting side to side and the intention of this action is to mobilize and isolate each vertebra and therefore each disc between each vertebra so that they're not locked on to the vertebra above and below it but simply working independently. That's great because your scapula feels so much looser now as well. They're really responding much better. Yeah, there's a lot of warmth there, which is great. I do like some warmth in the back. Lovely. Okay. Now coming down to some leg repatterning, starting off with the foot, feeling the big toe because in reflexology terms the big toe is all to do with our head and the neck of the big toe is our neck. So I'm just feeling around the back and side, seeing what the toe is telling me about the neck of the body. And then round and down. So coming from the kidney and adrenal. And because of the uh, first test we did, finding out about the frontal bone and a little bit of stress, I'm giving the adrenal gland an extra warmth. So the kidneys love a bit of warmth, as I'm always saying to my clients. So this adrenal gland will respond well if the kidney is warm and hydrated. So coming down through the kidney, down the ureter, to the bladder, helping expel and eliminate any toxins and any waste materials. Now working into the foot. Just anchoring into the hip and this is where I'm watching the opposite hip so just bouncing that opposite hip with a lovely circle rotating action and it should respond by raising nice and high which it did which is a, that's really good and that's lovely because the, the foot then tends to sit nice and flat and when we do the other one we'll see if it mirrors the first foot. So now coming up massaging into the right foot starting off on the big toe. Circling that toe, feeling into the neck of the toe and encouraging the toe to, to lie straight so that it relaxes its grip and lies in a straight manner rather than circling back into the other toes. It needs to feel relaxed that it can stretch out, have space between it and the other toes. And then coming down the thyroid, to the adrenal, again giving the adrenal lots of love, comfort and support, telling it everything's okay, everything's okay, down to the kidney, some warmth, and then the ureter to the bladder.
My tummy's joining in now. <laughs> That's got to be a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> Holding the foot in a lovely leg repatterning, encouraging the opposite hip to rise. Nice, lovely, let that go, let that go. Floppy doll, beautiful, lovely, that will really help you. And then looking at your pelvis, so just letting your legs go, the glute maxes, the calves and the hamstrings, just let them go. I've got you, I'm not going to let you go. Lovely, that's really good. Loosen, beautiful, like you're flying through the air. Oh, nice, so your, your feet are far more symmetrical now, that's a much better orientation. I'm just looking at the pelvis, so what that was for, a sacral fixation, is to make sure that the pelvis is symmetrical and balanced, harmonious with your body. Now a little Qigong, where I'm working on the sacrum with two hands, feeling into the energy here, seeing what orientation and breath is happening, feeling the warmth, I'm just tuning into what the energy is telling me. I feel very privileged and humbled to be able to give Qigong to so many people and this place on the body, the sacrum, is a sacred place. It's such a beautiful area to, to treat. And I almost feel like you're knocking on the door and asking to be let in and saying you'd like to help if there's anything you can do. And it can take a little while for the door to open. And I feel that that has now happened. And there is a lovely, fluid, calm that has descended. And it is in line with the breath and the the pulse of the cerebral spinal fluid, which gently rocks the sacrum. And I wouldn't be surprised if when we're stressed, or anxious, or lead very busy lives, that there may be some effect to the cerebral spinal fluid that it may be hampered as it travels. So this is so important to tune in to this area, make sure that it's moving without hindrance. that it is reassured 
I'm told everything's okay. Everything's okay. This treatment was once described to me by someone who had received it as it felt like warm, warm chocolate sauce was being poured from the top of their head all the way over their body because of the intense and profound sense of calm and warmth that waved over the body from the top of the head down to the tips of the toes. That's a lovely way to describe it. And now releasing just one hand and tuning in to the very top of the dural tube as it wraps around the brain. From the sacrum to the occiput. breath, circulation and the pulse, all moving as one, everything being reset back to a perfect harmony. very very slowly because that was a very deep part of the treatment if you'd like to slowly get up and turn over onto your back looking at the front of you and noticing that one hip is more raised, more proud than the other. The same with the chest and clavicle. So I'm just going to do a little correcting with you. Just going to have, I've got your leg, I'm just going to pull it over here. That might feel like a little bit of a stretch. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. The calf, the hand, the hip. Might feel it into the ankle, might even feel it into the shoulder. And breathe. Well done. Okay, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. Nice. Okay. So I'm just going to do a brief hip float, holding into the front of the iliacs. And gathering some movement and warmth there. It's good, I can feel some heat there, that's a really good sign.
a nice warm towel. And because the shoulders, the scapula came up as a little tense earlier, I'm just going to work a little bit more on the shoulders from this angle. This is an arm repatterning. And that feels nice and loose, that's a good sign. Probably because of all the work they've already had done on them. That's really good. Loose, loose, loose. Good. Feeling into the top of that trapezius. Yeah, a little bit of tightness just in the centre there. We're going to be addressing that in a moment. That's it, let go, let go, let go, nice and loose. A little bit clicky in the elbow. Not too bad, I think it's going. Okay, so that's where we've got a bit of tension left. <laughs> okay, so are you comfy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let your back go. I've got that. That's it. Lovely. We naturally go into a self-defence mode where we hold our muscles because we don't know what's coming, but it's okay. Let go as much as you can. That's really good. Wonderful. And your neck. Okay, let go, let go. All the way down. That's it. All the way down. Eventually your head will just relax, the muscles will let go and it will allow your head to go all the way down to this angle where it's almost tilted back slightly and then a little neck stretch just going to have a little feel of your neck it does feel quite tight especially on the left and then feeling into the T1 thoracic one and then up into the seven bones of the neck. Okay, they're starting to loosen. So we're just going to do another neck release. Let go, let go, let go, let go. All the way down. So I've got my fingers in a line in between the head and neck, encouraging the, ne the neck to tilt backwards. releasing 
encouraging space space between the vertebra and the discs space so that the muscles can lengthen just turning your head to one side and feeling what the neck is telling me creaking, a few clicks and crunches yeah, I can feel a bit sore there let go, let go, let go, that's it, lovely well done, you're doing really well ah, these are good, they're moving so these are the spinal processes Yeah, it tends to be higher up, so these ones are all right. So I'll use the ones that are moving in order to encourage the ones higher up that are a little bit stuck. So this reaction of the head moving as I press each vertebra down is a really good sign. Shows that there is movement within each, each bone. And now I'm just working, yeah, the spinal processes again. So this bit lower down on the other side where there's a little tension. Encouraging that vertebra to turn as it should do separately to the others. This can be a little bit sore here where it's like a relieving pain. <laughs> side it's here sort of about C4 and on your left it's more C23 yeah higher up so I'm just giving it a little warmth and TLC telling the vertebra everything's all right it can release let go become unstuck it can turn independently Play. Well done. Coming back to the centre. I'm just going to have a feel of the neck. Oh, let go, let go, let go, let go. And drop down. Nice. Much better. And I'm creating a space, a gap in between the neck and head. So, you should feel a lot taller after this. Now feeling into the muscle. Yes, around the base of the neck, 
out of the shoulder center, which is can be quite tight. It was quite tight earlier, Melissa, but actually I think that is now loosening. I think the heat of the couch and the, the warmth that the therapy has provided is loosening that off now. Oh. one side, pushing the opposite shoulder, nice and strongly down, so the head should react by pulling over, and it does, that's a really good sign that there is a bounce there, that there is movement, the shoulders bouncing up and down. With some people that can be frozen, where there is no movement there whatsoever. And I'm really pleased that we've got some movement going there. And over to the other side. Again, feeling into that shoulder. Pressing down firmly on the centre soft tissue. And bouncing the shoulder point down. That's nice. Lovely. That's what we want. We want harmony. We want everything working in balance and in the correct orientation. Correct blood flow, nerve signals, spinal flow, structure, everything in harmony. Let go, let go, let go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now I'm going to a little bit of Qigong for the cranium. Working to the neck and the back of the head at the moment. On the temporals and the occiput bone. This is a deep, deeply relieving treatment where again with Qigong we're feeling into what the body is telling us. There is a sense of calm and serenity. There is a sense of letting go and relaxation because the body is having therapy, the body is being looked after and cared for and it doesn't have to think it doesn't have to perform or act or there's no function it simply can relax Now I'm going to do a couple of de-stress Qigong techniques. One palm behind the head, one to the forehead, the frontal bone, and allowing that head to rock in whichever direction it feels the need. of letting go here. This helps everything. But I particularly like the fact that it helps the throat, allows us to express, communicate, and an overwhelming feeling of freedom. Likewise, it helps the head, our mind, abundance of care. 
capability to relax and we simply need to know how to do that and one way is to tune into our own body and what it is telling us and our body will easily tell you what it needs at any time if we trust our intuition if we listen at this point we see colours behind our closed eyelids which is a beautiful kaleidoscope of footage that our body and our mind and our spirit are talking The colours are channels or chakras that are opening and closing. Just like our chakras are breathing, living. Quite often with therapy we see the colours of purple and green. But we may also see blues, reds, oranges, yellows, pinks and whites. And white can bring a wonderful sense of lifting, like cares are being lifted away. Responsibilities, worries are being lifted, leaving us with a sense of spaciousness, lightness, like we are floating, like a white mist surrounding us, almost like it's in our head. That's definitely what I'm sensing right now. And allowing the head to come back if it needs to. There is a lovely feeling of spaciousness if it needs to come back to both sides. Allowing the forehead to let go. The eyebrows, the brow line, the contours of the face, the cheeks, the jaw, letting it all relax and let go. So this is a wonderful treatment to get rid of headaches and stress. Fantastic for head tension, migraines and insomnia all is well all is well slowly coming back when you're ready
doing one last treatment for any remaining head tension. Working on the ESR, Emotional Sensory Response. Two fingers at each side of the forehead. Lightly touching, sensing, reassuring, simply acting as a channel for the ESR to let go. I'm seeing a lot of colour. I'm seeing greens with bits of blue. Gorgeous green just on the edges. I'm seeing a lot of pink. And now changing to orange. simply a lovely overwhelming feeling of calm. And slowly bring your awareness to your feet and your hands. Sending your breath down to those extremities. And then gently moving into the fingers and the toes. In your own time there's no rush. It was a very deep treatment. Once you've introduced a little movement to the fingers and the toes, slowly a little more to the feet and the palms, to the soles, the heels, and then maybe turning into the ankles and the wrists. And send your oxygen to your shoulders, turning into the shoulders when you're ready in one direction. And then the 
other direction when you're ready. And then, again when you're ready, bringing your arms up over your head for a nice long body stretch. Feeling your whole body waking up, being stimulated and activated. Maybe do a stretch to one side like a banana. And the other. Back to the centre before you bring them down. I'm just going to remove a towel. kinesiology tests that weren't so good earlier and see what they're like now. Arm and leg. I'm going to push down with both and hold. Wow. A lot better. Same with this side and hold. Amazing. So much better. I'm going to hold this arm and if you could raise your left leg I'm going to push with both and hold. Entirely different. I think you're a different person. <laughs> Um, there's just a couple more, so I'm just going to squeeze your hips. Can you raise this arm for me? I'm going to push here and hold. Nice. And I'm just going to push that hip down. And raise again and hold. Brilliant. And that's everything that I needed to know. So, um, it was quite a deep treatment, so you'll need to come round really slowly. Hello. Hi, Melissa. Welcome back to the Bothy, to the therapy room. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to treating you again, lovely lady. Me too. <laughs> so, you were here last September. It's been several months. Gosh, it's it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're here on a beautiful day. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been since I've seen you? Yeah, pretty good. Quite busy. So, I do still get like a lot of tension and stuff just because of how I'm sat at my desk all day. But yeah, I've been pretty busy filming, busy working. So, yeah, still just as in need of a good relax as usual. Oh, bless you. Hopefully you get some downtime and some holidays and things as well. <laughs> no? no? Melissa! <laughs> this is a holiday. Okay, you've come to me for a holiday, that's nice. <laughs> a little trip away yeah. into the countryside. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's really relaxing being here as well. So. Oh, well, it's lovely to have you here. You. So... I just had a quick look back at your original consultation form that you filled in last September and um, so I just want a little bit of an update as to how the progress has gone since then and with all the beautiful treatments you've been having, whether you're better and better and, and finding some good results. So back then you talked about a bit of stress. Yeah, are you about the same level of stress as you were, or are things um, different? I think I'm better than last September, yeah, yeah. I think, I do think that's one of the things a lot of this channel and the treatments have been helping me with. It's kind of, I mean, so many people are giving me advice on how to deal with stress, I think it is helping. <laughs> there must have been a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Good, and you also used to suffer with headaches? Yeah, they're basically gone. Oh. I don't exactly know, pinpoint know which thing did it because I tried so many things, but pretty much 
gone, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> so from my perspective, I think a lot of that might have been a neck and a very tight neck can create headaches. Right. And you must have had lots of treatments that have helped the neck as well. And the treatments, I think, help me most are always neck and shoulders. Right. And I can really feel the difference the next day if someone's worked on my neck. I can really tell. Mm. It's, it's basically us humans have a bit of a design fault and our heads are too heavy for our necks and we tend to have our heads forward anyway either looking at phones max looking at the ground where to walk you know we need to put our heads back over our necks over our spine and walk nice and upright still look down but without leaning forward mm -hmm. and we all do it and so that's the sort of thing that will really help you just that orientation of your neck your head to come back right. so that your vertebra are stacked upright rather than leaning okay. mm. right. there's some mathematical equation as to the further your head is forward the multiple times weight it puts on your spine for every millimeter forward the extra double weight it puts on your spine so <laughs> it, it's really good to have it stacked upright yeah Gosh, yeah yeah, yeah. even when sitting you know everything we're doing really good posture yeah good posture yeah so uh, another thing you mentioned was skin how's your skin yeah i think it's i don't know if it's better or worse than last september probably quite constant um, my skin fluctuates a lot in terms of acne and stuff, so yeah, I think it's more my diet than anything else that seems to show up on my face, so it depends how I've been eating. Okay, <laughs> okay, but at least you're getting to know w what exacerbates it and what improves? Yeah, I know if I do have kind of like sweet foods or oil, oily foods, I do kind of get a spot that I can see as a direct result of it. Really? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good oils are good though. You know, yeah. Yeah. Nuts, seeds, and salad oils. Yeah. And, but yeah, sort of. The, the worst ones are cooked oils that heat and cool and heat and cool. So frying, for instance. Yeah, it would be like chips and a burger that'll give me this spot. <laughs> okay. Well, at least you know, and then yeah. it's a life choice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, anything else? How's your stomach and digestion? Um, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, no, it's good right now. Oh, I think good. It's better than last time, I'd say. Yeah. Excellent. Lovely. Yeah, okay. I think the stress went straight to the stomach sometimes, so, yeah. That, that <laughs> happens a lot. I see that a lot with my clients, yeah. Right. So, anything else to tell me before we start? I think that's everything, yeah. Okay, so one last thing I want to do with you before we start is I have a bowl here of some beautiful feel-good positive cards. It's like a message for the week and what I do is every client that arrives I ask them to delve and pick a card and then um, we read it together and sometimes they'll tell me why it's relevant to them or what they'll think about that week and then I upturn it and put it on my windowsill and then all my clients cards are there and we can all look at each other's and all those feel-good words and then those resonate all week and I just feel everyone that comes into the Bothy has that positive vibe of those, those meaningful words in, in this room and also some people take a photograph because then they want to keep reflecting on that word and its message yeah. um, during the rest of the week because if you're feeling like you need inspiration or you're feeling like you need a little bit of reassurance just think back to that word of that card and you it might just hit the spot oh that's a lovely idea oh thank you great choose a random Let's see which one calls out Resourceful. I find ways to release hidden potential, giving heart to others that solutions can always be found. Resourceful. Nice. Lovely. I really like that. Yeah. Does that resonate? Yeah, I think it does. Mm. I think it's a really positive word mm. that, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I think I really like that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah, and it might just uh, give you a little bit of strength this week. You yeah. know, there might be a moment that you think, no, remember that card, I'm resourceful. Yeah, mm. yeah that's really nice. Okay. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so let's give you a nice core treatment. Thank you. Okay, would you like to lie down? Thank you. Okay, comfy. It's a heated couch, so it should be nice and warm on your back. It's lovely. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're going to start off with some kinesiology like we did last time. Can you raise an arm for me? Just turn it, that's it. So I'm going to push at your wrist and you're going to keep it exactly where it is now. Don't let me push it down. Okay. And hold. Lovely. Same the other side. And hold. Good. And raise a leg, Melissa. I'm going to push here and hold. Good. A little bit of a shape there. And hold. Same again. Let's see if it disappears. And hold. Okay. It's coming down a little bit. And hold. Okay. I'm just going to see if you're dehydrated by pulling your hair. And hold. That's slightly better. Would you mind just having half a glass of water for me? Yeah. Got some ready for you here. Thank you. So the reason I pull the hair is because the hair relates directly to the kidneys and if the kidneys are dehydrated, they'll take their water from the hair. That's why some people particularly have dry hair, brittle hair or hair that doesn't behave. I had no idea. Mm. So, um, yeah. So it, your test was slightly better when I tested dehydration. So we'll see if it's much better now after some water. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's ready if you want any more. Uh, thank you. Okay, so let's test that again, arm and leg together, and hold. So much better. That's so weird. Can you feel the difference? I can really feel it. And hold. Okay, so it's going down on your right side. So I'm just going to have a feel of your right, and just relax, relax, that's it, of your right SIS, which is the sacroiliac separation. Okay. So um, it's very common although it shouldn't be there. And so we'll just see if I can get that corrected. So I've just anchored it and then we'll retest this side and hold. No, let me just see if, because I talked in between, that sometimes can delay the effect of the anchor. So I'm just gonna feel it again or I might have got slightly the wrong place. And hold. No, it's still not strong. Let me just have little feel from this angle. Yeah, I, I think I might have gone slightly the wrong place. And hold. Yeah, I felt it that time. Yeah. It felt nice. Yeah, so when I touched it that third time, it felt a bit sore there, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. like more tender. Okay, so let's move on to across you. Left arm, right leg, and hold. Nice and hold okay and hold yeah okay so it's quite obvious when you pass and when you fail yeah <laughs> and hold nice okay shoulders good and hold lovely i like the color of your top it's lovely oh, thank you and hold nice good just going to test this left hip and hold yeah, it's just shaking a little bit there. It's sort of like a judder. And hold. Definitely the knee. Did you feel oh, that? No yeah, strength there. Went straight down. Yeah. It's so weird. And hold. Yeah, ankle's fine. So definitely knee, tiny bit of hip, but this side fine and all the others are fine because they didn't fail in the first place. So I'm just going to update my notes. So that was your... 
right uh, left knee and hip okay so I'm just going to have a look at the knee in a little bit more detail just giving it a little turn and raise and hold yeah twisting it the other way and hold no gosh so I'm just anchoring you let's just see if it's on the inside or the outside and hold okay and hold okay at the back and hold oh, that's good okay so it's definitely that twist so coming in underneath out up top so lateral so it's a clockwise twist the knee so that was your left knee clockwise okay let's have a look at these hips so just going to have a look at your posture your orientation so the clavicles down is slightly on your left hand side and so is the hip a little bit more of the hip wise actually knees are level interestingly and ankles down so I'll just see if that's correct give me an arm again and hold nice and hold and hold good Hold, yeah, and hold slightly there. So this is the, um, those are called ACES test, tests on the pelvic area to see if they're twisted up or down, back or one side, or whether they're coming apart slightly. So that's when I test by pushing them in and um, it definitely was weaker on that one so uh, I'll make a note about that so it's not too much okay. it's only a little bit of a twisted left knee and the pelvis just opening up a little bit too much it needs it's almost like you need sellotaping you know you need binding back together again which is what the core treatments will do okay okay so Okay, and the knee, yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look at your neck by testing your leg. So I'm going to come out and up slightly. I'm going to try pushing to the floor. You're going to hold up and hold. Okay, that's a bit of an effort. And out again, and up. I'm going to push to the floor and hold. Okay. It wasn't rock solid. I think that was a little bit of an effort for you. So I'm yeah. just going to have a little feel of your upper neck, just around C1. Just relax, relax. Sorry about my cold hands. Thank you. <laughs> Quite refreshing. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bit's so tense. Yeah, yeah particularly on the left? I think they're both pretty bad, but actually, yeah, now that you say it, the left is okay. Nice. Okay. So, um, so we just did a leg test called a psoas test. So you have psoas muscles within your pelvis that are, it should be nice and strong and the right orientation, but sometimes they are compromised and it means that it's a struggle to do that test and you weren't bad at it but you need to be absolutely rock solid and okay. it, it can be better so when it's bilaterally weak i know that it's going to be the neck at c1 wow. the, the the top vertebra and so when i touch it if it's sore then it definitely confirms that that was a weak test and the the neck needs treating which you told me before anyway so right. but I know exactly where um, okay. and C1 is a, a sliver of a bone it's a qu 
quite a long thin bone it's not a chunky one like most of the others and it's designed in a way that it fits perfectly into the base of the occiput bone which is the base of the cranium if we had whiplash or an accident where the head flips in that way and in order to save our lives so we're not decapitated that bone will fit directly into the occiput and like fixate there so that it stops us injuring ourselves the only thing with that is it's really difficult to pull that bone down off there again so that you've got that free movement and mobility for the rest of your life it's really difficult to get that off so right. if we've had some injury or accident normally quite a major one like falling off a horse or or car accident or trampolining injury or you know whatever else yeah. then we can have that fixated bone there for life um, oh. and it can give us headaches it can give us blurred vision it can stop the correct blood flow into the brain and the head and um, for good cognition and clear thinking, etc. So um, it's really important to check that the bone orientation is correct in the okay, neck and head. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's maybe one reason why it was so sore there. Maybe you've injured it in some way. And so core therapy is a fantastic way to... Mm to just gently move that bone so it eventually rocks off and comes away from the occiput. Right. Wow. Mm. I didn't even know that existed. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you don't need to know, yeah. really. It's, it's, um, the therapist would need to know it, but uh, yeah. it's worth knowing. Thank you for explaining, knowing. though. It's, it's really interesting, actually, knowing as well. Well, so many of us have that... Um, injury that that effect on the c1 and occiput but we have no idea and maybe yeah. we suffer from migraines or headaches or just a, a thick head um mm. and obviously lack of mobility um you know driving or or just making us feel like we have a sore neck all the time and it's yeah. most likely something like that that will have caused it maybe way back like you know way back in our youth even yeah, yeah. Gosh. Mm. <laughs> Worth knowing about. Yeah. Okay, so can I have a little look at the tummy? Yeah, Is yeah, that of okay? Course. Can you just pull your top up for me? So if I could my hands are still a bit chilly okay. on the throat. Okay. The you bed is lovely and warm though, so as it well. is. And you did say they were refreshing. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take you up on that. So I'm just gonna have a little feel here. So this is halfway between the hip bone and the tummy button i remember this about you you're really bad with the tummy. yeah you're not keen on this are you no you know i must have treated thousands of people and at the moment i think i've got about five people who are similar to you. you're grinning and bare you're <laughs> gritting your teeth uh, similar to you where they just don't like their tummy touched it it's like a very strange feeling isn't it it's so weird. Yeah. You see, you wouldn't have that if you touched your tummy, would you? Probably not. Okay. So give me two fingers and put them where mine are. But if you can, as deep as mine are. So is that still a strange feeling? Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. Cool. So can you go a bit... So stay there for me, about there, and go a bit deeper. Look at you. Okay. So stay there. Stay there. Okay, give me your arm, nice straight arm. I'm going to push, you're going to hold and hold. Okay, so can you feel that you can let go now? Can you feel that hold wasn't as concrete as I would like it? Yeah. So in a normal circumstance, I would give you an amnofu deep abdominal Chinese massage. Okay. Okay, but because I know how you would feel with that, I'm not going to do that today. So a bit later in the treatment, I'm just going to give it some qigong, which is some deep warming energy treatment, some qi. Okay. Um, and I will be focusing on the area we were just touching, which is called the ICV, the iliosacral valve. I remember this from last time, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
um, and it's really important that our ICVs are clear and open, allowing food through in the, in the right timing in the, in, and uh, the right amounts. So if it's twisted or tight, as it might be, then it won't be doing its job properly. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of chigong in, okay. instead of uh, an amnofu. Okay, you can put your top back down. So when you're ready, you can turn over. Thank you. Right, can you bend your knee and raise your knee off the couch? I'm going to push here and hold. Okay, so that wasn't great. <laughs> Bless you. And the same with the other side. Bend first. So bend, 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 and now raise and hold. Okay, same again. There wasn't much strength behind those. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree. I'm just pulling your socks up, otherwise everyone's going to go, why aren't the heels at the heels? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to feel that C2 this time. So as I said just now, C1 is a sliver of a bone and C2 is a mighty thick bone. And you can feel I'm touching it now. That's probably a bit sore, is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's not, it's not very bad. Okay. Tender. Okay. So can you bend your knee again and raise? I'm going to push and hold. Okay, so that's a bit better. Same the other side and hold. And again, a bit better. So I will be working on your C2 as well when I come to do your neck. So I'm going to work on your spine now using lots of TCM techniques. This is Tweenar, which is a lovely rocking technique. And at the moment I'm working fairly gently because I'm just working out where your back is warm or cool, whether your back feels tight or restricted or twisted, whether the spine is pulling left or right, and whether it's more pronounced or more sunken. There's lots of different sensations I'm looking for at first when I touch a back giving tween R. So at the moment I can feel this area is quite tight. So this is T1 here, this knobbly bone, thoracic one. And that's quite tight there. And I can tell because when I push, your head comes with me rather than twisting like this, it's moving as one. But we've got some nice rocking, soft, flowing action down here with the lower spine, mid spine. So that's good because I will use the fact that this part of the spine is so good to be able to free up the upper spine. Because what we do in core is we don't go straight into where is tight or sore, wherever the key problem is. We tend to avoid it a little at first actually, and then use the rest of the body as its friend to help warm up and have an influence on the tighter areas. So I'm getting my phenar muscle, the base of my hand, the heel of my hand, in around the sacrum bone. So I'm tracing the edge of the sacrum and just around this edge are a myriad of ligaments that attach like sellotape around the outside and the inside of the sacrum, from there to the iliac, each side, the, the hip bones, and they help secure and hold the pelvis in the correct orientation. So I'm also using my thumbs in a line pressing directly on the side of the spine. And 
and then also over that lovely flat bone of the scapula, bringing my thumbs up in a soft pinching action. It doesn't hurt at all, it's quite nice actually, but it's just working out where is soft, where is tight, where needs extra attention. And the sacrum can take quite a lot of strength and weight. So I'm pressing in a downward direction over that sacrum. Pushing it down towards the legs. And then just coming round. And it feels amazing. Oh, good. It's a really nice feeling. I think it takes us back to the cradle because we're being rocked. It feels like we're be really being nurtured and looked after and loved. Oh. Yeah, that's a really interesting way of mm. seeing it. I mean, when are we ever rocked as adults? Yeah, that's a, a good point. Occasionally with a really long hug, um, maybe at a fairground or something. Yeah, <laughs> on a uh, ride, I guess, yeah. There are some yoga moves that are a nice rocking action. Um, but no, generally, I don't think we rock, do we? Yeah, and it does kind of make you feel really looked after. It's a, I guess the whole treatment does, but... It's a really a rare feeling. That's what I love about core. It's the whole body. You know, I will get round to treating everywhere. It's not just the area that you've come in for. You know, if people came in for a sore toe, I wouldn't just treat the toe. Mm. You know, I see all different kinds of issues and needs and ailments, all sorts. I had a lady arrive yesterday, bless her, she was quite um, upset. And she's been dealing with many airs. So it's, it's actually called many airs disease um, for years. And... Um, it comes in fits and starts. Sometimes she has an attack that lasts for 12 weeks. Oh, my gosh. Um, and it just makes you very sick because it affects the inner ear, a bit like labyrinthitis, where it makes you very dizzy and you don't really know which way is up. And so you, you can't walk or even travel in a car or oh you gosh. just have to stay put probably in a dark room, probably with closed eyes, because as soon as you open your eyes, you don't know where the horizon is and which way is up, and you, your, your body just feels upside down all the time. Oh, no. Yeah, I really feel for her. So I haven't started treating her yet. She just came for a chat, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to help her. I'm going to give her core therapy and some cranial treatment and Qigong and obviously a neck release, because I think... It's probably to do with the neck again. Mm. And we'll see. I, I don't think it's going to be a quick healing mm. action. We yeah. might, it might take weeks. We'll have to see. Yeah, that sounds tough. I can't imagine what that's like. No, and she's a very active lady, and it can affect you at any age, apparently. She was talking to someone who is a young mum with two young children, and she's had to deal with it. Uh, yeah. That's it's amazing how some of them can all relate back to the neck, though. There's, like, tiny, tiny bones. You're right. It yeah. is amazing. It's just something I would never have thought it would be for for anything posture-wise. I never think about the neck. No. I always think about my core or my shoulders, I guess. I don't think we, any of us do. I didn't really before I got into core therapy. 
I mean, I've been doing therapies for years, but I didn't realise how vital the neck is to all of our health until I studied TCM and core therapy. Mm. Am I pulling your hair? I'm sorry. No, not at all. So this is called a wing stretch. Your angel wings, just pulling out each scapula. That's it, nice and relaxed. Let it loosen, beautiful. side of your spine, again rocking the spine side to side. So the spine should give, it should shift left to right. It's quite a strong back Melissa has, but I'm feeling, oh yeah, it's moving here a bit better, but the lumbars won't, weren't moving brilliantly. I'll come back down here. So these thoracics are moving beautifully. And then kidney area just above the waist just starts to go tighter here. Can you feel that, Melissa? Yeah. And then a little bit further down to the waist and the top of the sacrum. Yeah, so from doing that I can feel that the waist area, the, the kidney area needs a little bit more attention. So what I'm trying to do here is rock the pelvis in order to create some flow in the vertebra. It's especially this side, yeah, it's more left. I can feel that now. Sometimes the more you work on a part of the body, the more the actual source of the issue of the area comes out. And that's what's happened here. So the more you work on it, it becomes more obvious. There we are. Oh, lovely. Much warmer, much looser. Good, okay. Um, and then a brief scapular float. Okay, so just coming down to the feet. Actually, I'm going to put a nice wheat bag on your neck. That will help when I come to do the neck release. There we go. I know you like your heat, oh, don't that's you? that's lovely. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to put this on your back, ready for coming there. 
So relaxing your foot down. There you go. Relax, that's it. Relax your foot down. So picking up the big toe, holding it with one thumb while securing the base of the big toe with the other, massaging around, which is actually the neck area in reflexology terms. There's some good mobility there. So I'm not only mobilizing at the base of the thumb, but also halfway up at that knuckle point, halfway up the thumb. Beautiful. And now just having a feel of the kidney adrenal area and down to the bladder through the ureter. I'm just having a feel. The kidney does feel a little bit tight and uh, I have worked on it with the back but this needs a little bit extra TLC. Just needs some warmth. Probably needs a pint of water. <laughs> do you drink much water, Melissa? Um, I do, but they're always in like a very specific part of the day. Like when I'm sat at my desk, I drink quite a lot. But then in the mornings and the evenings, I think I don't really drink it that much. Okay. Well, so long as you're getting enough yeah. through when you're working, it should be okay. Yeah, I think I drink quite a bit. Yeah, okay. So, a foot float, a little bit of orientation, anchoring into some key acupressure points, pushing into the pelvis, turning out, raising that opposite hip, that's it, let it go, let it go, this is just re-patterning the pelvis, using the leg as a lever, lovely, and down. So feeling into the base of that toe again, loosening. What I try and do with the foot is separate the foot into, in my mind, into three sections. And then I'm holding the bottom two sections while I'm separating and moving in a clockwise or anti-clockwise manner, rotating the upper part of the foot. And that hopefully loosens this uh, scapular point, which is the reflex point of the, the foot. And all of those joints, muscles of the upper part of the body. There you go. That'll feel good. And now coming down, feeling that kidney again, this time on the left-hand side. Mm, it's just popping a little bit. I can feel it just... It's like going down a step. It feels quite firm at the kidney and then go down a step to the ureter. Of course, I've felt hundreds of kidney points on the feet. So I'm getting to know what feels um, like healthier or less healthy and, and how to treat them. So sometimes by just in a circular motion, pulling the kidney away towards the posterior part of the foot, the internal side, bringing it forwards in order, like I do with Twinar, if you like, to bend the organ, bend the muscle in the foot, 
in order to stretch it out, encourage it to loosen, it encourage the kidney to expel, get rid of anything it's holding on to. Of course, the kidneys in Chinese terms are associated with the feeling of fear. So if we have tight kidneys, it can be a sense of fear that we all relate to. We all have fear of some aspect within our lives. So this is really good. If you find this place in your foot, give it a good massage in order to release fear. It's like having a hug, some reassurance. And then coming up to the solar plexus point, holding on to the acupressure places and then bringing the lower leg right out in order to raise that opposite hip, realign the pelvis. That's it, let go, let go, I've got you. Nice and smooth. Lovely. Lovely, good, good, and down. So I've just got two hands on the very base of the spine over the large flat bone of the sacrum. Applying a little bit of Qigong. Just kick started straight away. Oh, that's so good. I'm feeling the energy. Arriving and settling. into the cerebral spinal fluid as it pulses on its way around the head down the spine arrives at this point in the sacrum and goes back up again and the pulse is very different to our circulatory pulse it's very different to our breath timing. It's, it's normally a little slower. And it can get out of out of rhythm. So one of the intentions with a sacral float is to tune into that pulse and instill a little reassurance and, and rhythm.
and at a certain point I just feel a huge release like the spine and the cerebral spinal fluid are in tune, relaxed and working together. In your own time if you'd like to turn back over Melissa you're right yeah good good okay so um, I think you need to reorganize your hips I feel like you haven't laid down correctly that's it, okay, yeah, yeah, it's probably something I need to do, that's all right. So this hip is prouder, so I'm just going to pick you up and move you around a bit. You see, I see that's more aligned. And so is that. Does that feel a bit odd now? It feels so weird. Okay, do what you need to do then to feel okay. Okay, let's have a look at you. Yeah, you've put yourself back. Yeah, so this hip is coming forward here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have to... Well, you don't have to. You, <laughs> you need to be comfortable, but I can just see what your hips are doing through the way you're lying. Yeah. So this part of you is this way and this is here. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to work a little bit on the hip. Is this all right, me doing this? Yeah. Not too sensitive? Yeah, the hip is fine. Yeah. Compared to the tummy. Yeah. I mean, it can get a bit sensitive around here. You're right, me working here with okay. the heel of my hand. So this is more into the groin area where we have a lymph factory called the inguinal lymph, dealing with waste materials and scooping up lymph from lymph nodes all around the lower part of the body. Yeah, it does feel a bit tight there. Does it feel tight to you? I'm wondering if that is that's why you're yeah, I can rolling. Feel like a, a point there. That it, yeah, I can feel. Yeah, Ooh, it's quite yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably not quite so bad on this side. No, no. it's not comfortable, but it's nothing compared to the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you like a hot towel on you? Yes, please. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? give your knee some qigong, just going to raise it slightly, put mine under and back down, that's it, nice and relaxed. So I'm just tuning into the feel of the knee, again whether there's any softness, whether it feels too tight, whether it feels misaligned, cold, it 
feels nice and warm but it does feel quite tight especially on the outside lower down so I'm just feeling with my thumbs to soften that outside lower part of the knee and then into the patella yeah it's moving that's good now we've done a little bit of tweeno I'm just going to give it some chigong so holding my hands each side tuning into the energy and instilling some some ease softness fluidity when we tested the knee earlier at the start of the treatment with the kinesiology the knee unfortunately didn't give a very good positive test it was probably one of the weaker ones so I'm just really intending some good energy here knees can be associated with not wanting to move forward in life being held back by something so moving into that knee to get it soft and fluid The warmth and the energy is quite amazing. Beautiful. Lovely. So just feeling into the hips. I feel like it needs to let go, soften, loosen. I feel like there's a lot of tightness there, a lot of stress maybe. So I'm just feeling into those hips and immediately I'm feeling a lovely rotation like a, a chakra rotating very slow but it's beautiful flowing action. So because of one of the tests on the ACES pelvic kinesiology tests earlier was the coming together of the iliac just felt a bit loose in the test so I'm just tuning into those iliac and bringing them back together making the pelvis one whole beautiful girdle lovely I'm just going to take the arm now ah, sit nice and soft working with the arm as a lever to work on that shoulder scapula and neck
so that one really helped my job. Okay, so now I'm going to give your ICV some Qigong. So coming round, just going to slip my hand under your tummy. That's it, just relax back down, lovely. So I've got my hand just over the the iliosacral valve in the abdominal area and I'm picturing the valve visualising where it rests, how it looks sending it some positivity and with Qigong there's always warmth it starts quite soon and then I'm picturing like an unwinding as if the ICV perhaps is twisted or tight or blocked or it might be in the right place untwisted and loose but it might simply need some love and attention. So I'm just giving it some Qigong to do that right now. And straight away there's this beautiful circling energy. It tends to go in a clockwise manner. It's, uh, it's loosening, it's great. So this is definitely the right approach where the abdomen is very tight or sensitive. Loosening and softening, really powering through this beautiful Qigong energy. Some nice breath work, some nice longer breaths. Mm, that feels a lot better. Okay. Now I come to work on the neck. I'm just going to take your hair away. There we are, lovely. Sorry, my hands are still chilly. Even after all that work. got nice flat palm up hands feeling each side of the spine again rocking it side to side seeing if it moves with me and wherever there's tightness I'll come back to I'm just getting an idea at the moment of what's happening so immediately I can feel that we're holding on to a bit of tension here. We just need to let that go. So breathe, breathe, breathe. That's it. Let go, let go. Lovely. Well done. Well done. And then T1. And then up to C7. Yeah, rocking okay. But it will be better after all. Oh, and then a bit of clunking. Oh, yeah, sorry, you can feel okay. that, yeah, so that's, oh, that's your C3 right side, 
left is okay. And then just coming up to do a neck release. So bring your hands and just let go, Melissa, let go. That's it. Nice, heavy head. Heavy head all the way down. That's it. I know it feels very uncomfortable, but this will get better every time we repeat this action. Occiput to try and levitate the C1 off the, the occiput. Rocking again. And starting way down the thoracics. Halfway between the scapula. Just instilling a little bit of softness here. Coming up for a neck release once more. That's it. Perfect. Wonderful. So that's the action that we want. A nice tilt back where the gap between C1 and the occiput is encouraged to open. It can feel tight at first. And the more we do that particular C1 neck release, the more it opens up. And pushing down each shoulder. Just a little bounce. So that should bounce back every time I give it a little push. And if it doesn't, which I do see from time to time, it just means that the neck and shoulders are so tight, there's no looseness, no softness there, no bounce. Yeah, so I'm shifting that T1 left and right to loosen up that upper back and neck and shoulders. The neck is still very tight. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel like it's my neck. I can feel it on myself. Lovely. I'm putting some intention some Qigong with the end of my row of fingertips and warmth. And then a gentle stretch. Good. I've come back up to the neck. It's shifting now. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, it's still a little bit clunky at that point, but I think we're going to get rid of that. Letting it go, beautiful, lovely rock back. Oh, there's some beautiful space there now. So now I've got my fingers in a row at about in between C2 and C3, creating another little gap. And then a stretch again. A 
going to come all the way down the spine. Oh, a bit sensitive there. Letting it go. That was probably a bit sore. Okay, let it go, let it go. I've got you. Give me the full weight of your head. Lovely. So I'm quite low down now, in between C6 and C7. And now I'm going to turn and have a look at the left side. So I'm pushing down on each vertebra and hopefully, as it is doing, the neck is bouncing back, cre creating this lovely rocking action of the head. Each time I press on a separate vertebrae. It's a bit tight higher up and looser lower down. So normally with clients I'd say the neck does take months to sort out. Probably need to come weekly at first and then <clears throat> space them out and then eventually to six weekly for maintenance. Obviously this is a one-off treatment which is fine but it will still make a big difference. You'll still feel some improvement in your neck etc. So I'm now just pushing on the spinal process of C2 which is near to the top. And I can feel C3 is really tight. I'm just going to... There we are. Yeah. It's giving you a bit of grief, that, I know. But it will be worth it just to have some more mobility, less tightness, probably less pain and referred pain. For instance, headaches and brain fog. And to the other side... Pushing down the right side of the spine, each vertebra separately. And then up and around. Oh, yeah. I know. I've had this done to myself many times, I know how it feels, it can feel a little bit sore. That's it, you're doing really well. <laughs> That's really good, having some good deep breaths. It's moving well now. Much better. Good. Sorry if I keep catching your hair. No, no, it doesn't hurt at all. Oh, good. But the neck does, hey? Neck, neck does. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like tender, isn't it? Yeah. But it also feels amazing because I can feel it being released, like the tension. It's just so nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's a strange feeling, isn't it? Because it feels sore, but on the other hand, you sort of feel no carry-on. I think that's doing yeah, something really good. It's like good soreness. Lovely. It's gone a little bit rosy, which is a good sign. Shows the blood's come to the area, which is what I want. And then back to the centre. Just having another little feel of the neck. Oh... Okay, so I'm just going to hold on that little point for a moment. Are you okay there? Yeah. yeah. So I've got two fingers on the side of C3 on the right side. I'm pushing them left because they felt they were subluxating to the right. Feeling into the energy, the warmth, Qigong, 
visualizing and intending that energy directly to that vertebrae. And let go, let go. Oh, that feels better. That clunk has gone. And a strong stretch, pushing the shoulder down and the neck up and across, lengthening and turning a little. It's something we can't really do to ourselves, these kind of stretches, so it's really nice to have them done. Now tuning in to a little cranial balancing. I'm at the point of the temporals and occiput. Got my thumb to the front of the temples my hands and fingers round the sides and back, tuning into that beautiful Qigong. And what I'm concentrating on here is the length of the spine. So where I'm touching at the back of the neck is the very top of the spine where it touches the occiput. And now I'm visualizing all the sets of the spine as it goes all the way down to the sacrum through the cervical, the thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx. And tuning into each vertebra in turn, making sure it's happy, it's aligned, not twisted or fixated or subluxated. Simply, it is in a good place. And it is a privilege as a therapist to facilitate and to be present during this state, which is so rare in people's lives. I feel honoured and humbled to be present. Just going to give another Qigong technique just at the sphenoid bone using the heel of my hands just touching in a reassuring way, not pressing and not too lightly, just a nice touch, being constant. And this bone has a lot to do with our hormones, because it secures the floor of the pituitary gland, which sits just above, in between the eyes at the back. Just like a plane flying, it can tilt downwards or upwards. It can tilt up left or right, down left or right. There's so many different angles and directions. And if it tilts too far down, we're prone to feeling depressed, to feeling low. It's really 
really important that our sphenoid and therefore our eye line looks out to the horizon. Okay, keeping your eyes closed, Melissa, take three nice long breaths. And slowly sending your breath down to your feet and your hands. Gradually introducing a little movement, stretching into the fingers and the toes, widening the palms and the soles, and then turning into the wrists and the ankles, and then turning into the shoulders, rotating one way and the other. And then when you're ready to, bringing your arms up over your head for a nice long body stretch. Okay. My pleasure. So I just need to retest a couple of things that weren't happy earlier. Okay. So I only retest the ones that failed earlier. Right. Um, so can I have your right arm and your right leg and hold? So different. Very different. Wonderful. So I'm going to look at your knee, which was that way. Can I have this arm and hold? Nice, really good. I mean, that was that was quite a bad one that earlier. Went straight so. down earlier, didn't it? It did, yeah. So the leg is going to come out and then up. I'm going to push down to the floor. You're going to hold up and hold. Oh, easy. <laughs> so you held it earlier, but I could feel it, it was a strain for you. Yeah. So we're coming out again and up. I'm going to push down and hold. Okay, so that's going down a little bit, so I'm just going to have a little feel what's causing that. It's probably in the back rather than the neck this time. So just loosen, that's it. So it's probably about there. Is that sore? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it for a little bit because I'm not just testing it now. I'm going to treat it for a moment. And if this is out... Then C6 is going to be out, so I'm just going to have a little feel under your collar. About there. Yeah. Okay, let's have a little retest of this. Coming out and up. I'm going to push to the floor. You can hold up and hold. Much better. Good, good. And then the last one, hips. And give me an arm and hold. Perfect, easy, you're fine. It's amazing how the body responds, it's so cool. Yeah, that's what I love about it. The, 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 the proof is at the end when we get the strong tests of ones that were previously weak. Yeah. So. You've been core therapied. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It was wonderful. Absolute pleasure. Hello, Melissa. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming back to the Bothy. Thank you for having me. Oh, it, I just really look forward to your visits. We have, I think we have quite a special relationship. Yeah, it's really nice. Like, I feel like we started off doing like, collaborations together and I didn't know what to expect. I've become friends along the way. Mm, <laughs> bless you. So, you're here for a core therapy. Yeah. 
my favourite. Oh, is it? I love it. I love watching the videos you do of it as well. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's fascinating. It brings something new up every time. There's a like a Mary Poppins bag of different techniques to use, so every treatment is completely different. So before we start, would you like to pick a virtue reality card? I would love to. <laughs> I think I was saying in our video yesterday, but for some reason when I have to pick cards like this, I always want to go for the ones that are hidden. <laughs> Adventurous. Oh, you know. haven't heard that before. No, I haven't. That's quite rare for me, I think. Adventurous. Would you call yourself adventurous? Um, to a moderate extent. <laughs> you are a YouTuber. I think that's, that's quite true. adventurous. Yeah, I guess actually, yeah. <laughs> now, without glasses on, I can't read oh. that, so would you like to read it for me? The wonder of life fills my being. I willingly challenge old ideas and images. Oh, I like that. Mm. Maybe that is adventurous when we willingly challenge old ideas. Mm. Yeah, that is a challenge, isn't it? Yeah to take on a different mindset. Yeah, it's like preconceived notions. That's right. Yeah. Lovely. Thank so <laughs> we're going to put that on the shelf with all my other clients' cards. And I'm going to put these back in the bowl. And in a moment, I'll ask you to lie down on the couch. Thank you. Oh yeah, there. all the other cards are Really lovely as well. You've got beauty, trusting, uncomplicated, respectful, enthusiastic. This is the one I picked yesterday, which is pure hearted, positive, and then my new one, which is adventurous. Okay. So, Melissa, would you like to lie down? Thank you. Lovely. So I'm going to just go through some kinesiology with you and work out what your body is telling me. Can you raise a nice straight arm for me? That's it. Perfect. I'm going to push here at the wrist. You're going to hold up. So resist my movement and hold. Okay. And hold. Okay. And then raise a leg. I'm going to push and hold. Okay, and the other, and hold. Okay, so because I've treated you a couple of times to core therapy before, I'm starting to know your body, and I know that you're stronger than you were the first and definitely the second time, because I can feel you've got less of a shake. So when you first started coming to me, yeah. there was, and I don't know if you can feel that, sort of integral into the body. When I push, there's there's a little bit of a shake there, but that used to be quite significant. And it used to be a weaker test, so the arm or leg used to descend. So you're holding it now. There's still a little shake, but it's much better. That's good. Okay, so I know, because that tells me a lot about what's really going on, like at a structural level of your body, that it's more, intact and aligned. Oh, that's good. Mm. That's really good. Mm. Must be all these treatments you're getting. <laughs> so okay. can I have arm and leg together and hold? Okay, so not supportive <laughs> and hold again. Yeah. yeah, so quite different to the first tests we did where you isolated each muscle. Can you see the difference? I yeah. really can. So I'm just going to see what might be causing these ipsy tests to go down and ipsy is when we test one side or one side so having pulled your hair I'm just going to retest this side and hold okay so i think you need some water can i just give you a little glass of water yeah, of course. Uh, actually we've got some ready here for you thank you
sometimes forget to drink water when I'm traveling. That's really you. good. I'll <laughs> refill that and put that on the shelf for you. Thank you. Okay, let's have a retest and hold. Much better. That's so weird. And hold. Much better. So you haven't got a, an ipsy failure, which is excellent. So you did have both. I yeah. tested the hair and you've gone strong. So it simply needed, your body simply needed water. water. Um, right, we're going to move on now. So I'm going to take this arm and this leg and hold. Okay, not as strong. And hold. Okay, <laughs> absolutely no strength there at all. So it's probably your jaw. So if you could put two fingers there on the jaw hinge. That's just on the TMJ, and then we're going to go back to the same test with you supporting the jaw and hold. Entirely different. Can't push them down. Mm. So when you support an area that needs help, your body says, yes, you've got the right place. Okay. So I'm just going to do three more of the same tests. So can you put those fingers on that side of the jaw? Give me this arm and this leg and hold. Again, it's supporting it. So now we're just going to test the other side of the jaw, just either hand on there for me, and then give me alternate leg and arm and hold. No, okay, so it doesn't look like it's the right side of the jaw. If you could put those fingers there and hold. No, okay, so it's the left side of your jaw that okay. seems to be out of alignment. So I'm just gonna have a little feel of it and see if I can correct it now. Okay, so just using the phenar muscle, which is the muscle at the base of the thumb, to the heel of the hand. And it's a very sensitive area. It's large and warm. And I'm able to really tune into and work out what the jaw is doing, whether it's tight whether it's clamped shut or whether it's fluid and soft and able to to move without a hindrance oh yeah it's coming good now okay so i can feel the left side is more tight than the right the right actually feels like it's too open like it needs more solidity i think it's because the left it's almost like the left has tightened and it's opened up the right side, it's twisted it. So my intention here with the energy and physically is bringing heat and softness and reassurance to the left side of the jaw, which will then help the right side to reconnect. feel quite a lot of movement there. There's like um it's like a figure of eight spiraling very 
slow, gentle, warm movement. I think this area needs quite a lot of reassurance, just allowing it to relax and let go. Yeah, it's a good movement, it's a softness there now. So I know if I was treating Melissa on a regular basis, I can feel that the jaw might need more regular treatment. But that's much better. Yeah, lovely. I feel so much looser now. Like, I always have quite a lot of jaw pain, I think, when I'm stressed, which I think I am quite a lot recently. It goes straight to my jaw. Um, and like when you released it, it almost felt like when your ears pop, like on a flight, like that release of something. Mm. I could feel that just now on the left. Mm. But yeah, I, I never actually noticed the difference in size, but mm. now I'm quite aware of it, I can actually feel it now. Mm. I've always just thought both, both were locked, mm. but yeah, you're right, it's really on the left. Mm. I don't know why. Mm. Yeah, that's why it's worth doing those extra kinesiology tests after mm. we found that it's a jaw mm. because it's it's worth knowing which side because also we need your body to know where it is it's not just your consciousness it's your subconsciousness that needs to get on with healing it mm. okay so now I've done the jaw let's retest so I can have arm and leg and hold entirely different Very different. and hold and I'm putting a lot of strength into that, that's brilliant. So your body knows it's, it's better. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you lived locally, I'd treat you, I'd recommend to treat you maybe weekly for like three weeks to really get into the jaw and, and it, soften it permanently. Would it like teach it how to? Exactly. Mm. Right, how's tummy been? I'm quite good recently. Yeah. yeah. Can I just have a little feel of yeah. the ICV, the ileocecal valve? Oh, yeah, this is right, yeah. Well, I I've, feel like I've got better with... Have you? The, yeah. So I'm just feeling for your tummy button and your hip point. I'm just going to do it through your jumper, because I've got chilly hands. Yeah, see, that feels OK today. Good. Just last time, I don't know what it was. It just felt very intense. Mm. Yeah, okay, so can you put two fingers from that hand just into that point there, quite deeply in, mm. yeah, and give me an arm and hold. Yeah, much better, much better, and I could feel it was stronger as well. When I say stronger, I mean actually softer, because I don't want it to be in spasm or cramped up, twisted, or yeah. like knotted. It needs to just be soft and working effectively. Okay. okay, you can release. Um, any other issues I need to be looking at? I did have my left leg. It, it doesn't feel too bad. On the first raise I could notice it, but just last night in my sleep it felt very, very, like, like tense and spasmy. Okay, um, do, you mean, do you mean the quad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's yeah. test a quad then. So can you bend this knee? I'm going to support the foot. I'm going to hold here on the quad. Now the quad is a large, strong muscle, so I'm going to be putting quite a lot of pressure against it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do the usual hold, and you will stop me pushing that way, so keep it bent like that. And hold. No? No. No, okay, okay. <laughs> I couldn't do anything there. Can we just test this one? I'm just thinking yeah. what it might be. I'm going to do the same again here and hold. Entirely.
entirely different. Entirely. So you're right, there's something up with this quad. So um, I'm wondering if it's an origin and insertion. So I'm going to be putting some pressure with the ends of my fingers to the head and foot of the quadricep bundle, the, the four muscles. I'm going to be pressing in various areas on those four muscles. And the reason that this might have been a problem is when the end of the muscle, which has barbs on it, which connect it to bone, and those barbs can sometimes levitate. The barbs, if you imagine, they look like Velcro. And they can sometimes just slightly levitate, not fully, otherwise you wouldn't be able to use the leg at all. Um, and it could have been through tripping or injury or overuse or just some action that mm. has this, uh, weakened the leg. And so what I'm doing here is literally pushing the Velcro back on. And sometimes it has an immediate effect with muscle weakness. We just need to push the barbs back on again. Does this hurt when I'm doing this? No, the last one, so the third one you did, was slightly tender. Yeah, on the not, side. Yeah, mm. not in a painful way though. Okay, so we're going to retest that, see if it's any better. So I'm going to push here and hold. Okay, that's yeah. obviously what it was. So how long's that been a problem for? Just on and off sometimes when I'm sleeping it starts spasming okay. and feels a bit weird in the morning. Okay, so yeah. if that's what it is, origin and insertion, then you know what to do now. Just push yeah. at the bottom and top of that muscle group. Okay. Um, but when I'm doing the tween R, if I remember, let me know if I forget, I will have a little tween R of that muscle once I'm doing your body. Okay, okay anything else? Um, I've had quite a bit of like stress recently um, and especially it's related to the jaw I guess that when I went on holiday for a few days like all my jaw pain was just gone so I could I could tell that the stress was gone when I took a rest but in daily life there's just I feel a lot of stress and I think that's why it's tense okay but I just don't know exactly like what is making me stressed or why because I really enjoy everything I'm doing I just yeah I can't really work out why it's stressing me out or where okay. the stress is coming from okay yeah. Okay, so I've got a couple of ideas. I might just sit you up in order to try out some kinesiology and some NLP with you. What's NLP? Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. Oh, okay. I'll explain. So we're just going to do a little kinesiology on what might be causing you to feel a little bit stressed or is it anxious as well or yeah anxious I guess before going to sleep and things my mind will pick on a few things it's worried about to mm. just focus on okay yeah so um, stress can be caused just by busyness as well and I know you're <laughs> a very busy lady and you've got lots of if you like filing cabinets in your head of aspects of your life that might need attention, including future projects. So you're probably considering a lot of the time, yeah. what do I need to be doing because of whatever's going on going forwards. So neuro-linguistic programming is a whole world of fascinating aspects of how we think and what makes us say various things. NLP can be used to help youngsters with interviews, can help prisoners to rehabilitate, can help all of us in our lives with dealing with potentially stressful situations or just life in general. And basically we have these filing cabinets of aspects of our life and they form six different areas that we, our, our eyes, tend to look at 
in order to glean information. Mm. So um, those six areas are quite significant and very obvious. So, and it's very difficult for the mental or physical state to not look in those areas when we're gleaning that information. Okay. So for instance, the police and other interviewing um, bodies will use NLP as a means of finding out if someone is being uh, true to themselves or actually telling a lie. And as I said before, it's used with school children and university students in order to help them to prepare for life going forward, whether it's for job interviews, putting together their CVs, and these days, life on camera. Mm. So whether it's digitally, whether it's working from home and facing a screen of lots of faces mm -hmm. and we want to be able to come across in the best possible way. So you'll have noticed on camera now maybe I'm looking in different places in order to think of what I want to say to you next. Okay. So I'm gleaning information maybe from a book, maybe from a, a film that I've watched about it, maybe from my experience working with clients and also I'm putting it together for you so I'm creating a conversation. So yeah. creating is like imagination. So um, if I was to say to you what would be your most beautiful place to go on holiday you'd have to imagine it or put it together. Maybe it's somewhere you've not actually visited before mm. but you'd say oh it would have a forest but it would also have a beach and it would have a, a mountain top and you know you would just put together this amazing place that has all these aspects of everything that you love but you've never actually seen it in person before like the best possible place so that would be from your imagination you'd be creating it so you'd go to a place from your eye sockets for that filing cabinet which is actually imagination and creating but if I was to say to you something like oh tell me about your childhood where what were you doing when you were age 10 mm -hmm. now if you were going to the same place as the imagination then I know you would mm -hmm. making you'd be making something up right yeah maybe because you can't remember it very well mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> or or maybe because you, you you're avoiding something at age 10 and you don't want to remember what actually happened at age 10 so you're gleaning and you're putting together mm. creative thoughts right. yeah yeah and quite often we do this subconsciously we're not consciously lying a lot of the time mm. it's our subconscious protecting us from something that we don't want to recall mm. um, in detail wow yeah so that's quite a long explanation, but um, let's have a little look at what might be causing the stress. So I'm going to just test with kinesiology first of all, okay. and then I'm going to do some NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So can you just give me a little finger and a thumb, doesn't matter which hand, and I'm going to try and pull apart and hold. Okay, so nice and strong. So that's our baseline, okay? So we're gonna keep coming back to this so long as I don't overuse it. If necessary, I'll have to find another muscle that's strong. Yeah. And this is called a strong indicator muscle, an SIM. Okay. So I'm gonna keep coming back to it. I'm glad I was weak on this one last time, so I'm really glad. I remember that. I was trying so hard to hold it. <laughs> You're so much better. Yeah, I'm better than last time. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me ask you, uh, I'm actually having a conversation with your subconscious when I'm doing this, but I know that you're here as well, so you know you will want to answer the question. So for instance, is the stress caused by busyness, okay? The amount of things that you have on. So can you give me your little finger and thumb and I'm going to try and pull and hold. Yeah, so to a certain degree. It wasn't, it didn't yeah, I was saying explode. No. You were saying no. Yeah. So it just opened a little but it, it didn't explode. 
okay. okay. You can relax your arm down. Could it exist that I say no, but my subconscious yeah. says yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Totally. A lot of the time, actually. Oh. Our subconscious really knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was a little. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the stress caused by unknowns, like the unpredictability of YouTubing? Mm. And hold. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. So you'll notice that I touch the back of your wrist whenever there's a weak point and wherever that is on the body. So this is an anchor point, so I'm anchoring you. And every time there's a weak point, I form, or your body forms, a shopping list of weak points. And because I'm anchoring each one, it goes into that shopping list, into your subconscious, and your subconscious will get on with dealing with it. And especially when I then start giving you the core therapy treatment, mm. this is like the assessment at the moment, yeah. the actual treatment, then it goes into that. And then we'll retest any weak ones at the end. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, the difference is... It's so weird because it's like, it's my fingers, so I, I know how it feels, how it feels strong and how it feels weak. But it's so weird how different it is. And it's, it's not like I'm doing anything different. Mm. Yeah. I, I, it's something I can't explain to mm. people watching, but mm. it, it is really, it's, it's no different for me. And sometimes I can't even necessarily tell the difference, but that one was really obvious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm fascinated by kinesiology and I see it all the time. Yeah. So, for instance, kinesiology is uh, also called muscle testing and it's also called touch for health. So, it has different names if you want to, to look it up online. Okay. And it's all about uh, finding a strong indicator muscle, like I've just found this one with you, but it could be any muscle. That's why we use an arm or we use a leg as well. Mm. Um, lots of muscle tests on the body can be a strong indicator muscle. And once we've got that, we use it as a baseline to test various other physical, emotional, mental aspects. It, it could be pretty much anything. It could even be an affirmation. It, it, it could be anything. And once we've got that SIM, the strong indicator muscle, we can then test anything against it. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of pointers with kinesiology on the body that it's really obvious for a therapist to say, look, this is how it works, and it's just so obvious. Yeah. Okay, so NLP. Um, do you want me to test any other aspect before doing the NLP with the kinesiology with your hand um, that might be causing stress that you think it might be caused by? So I've tried busyness and I've tried unpredictability. Maybe I wonder like fitness, like just lack of stamina and stuff as in just not having the energy to get through the day. Oh. I do wonder about that side of things, oh, and whether okay. that's letting me down. Oh. I don't know. Okay. So, let's try that. Uh, so, is it lack of stamina and hold? Oh. No. No. You are really too. strong. You're really strong. That's kind of creepy, but yeah, because um, it felt so weak the last few times that now it's like such a contrast. Mm. Mm. Have you any other idea? Um, sleeping okay most days. Do you have very long days? Yeah, very, very. So you, your, your sleep is restricted. Do you do anything for you? Do you exercise? Do you meditate? Do you uh, like do a jigsaw puzzle or watch a, a sleepy film? Or do you do anything that is utterly relaxing? Uh. If I do, it's on a weekend where I don't have plans, so not that often. Mm. Yeah. I don't really have time. So I'd... you have long days yeah. and they're quite full? Yeah, and then if I get home, I usually sleep is their priority, to sleep straight away as opposed to winding down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can that be changed at all? 
because it's adding to your stress by the look of it. I don't know. I don't know how I would because I don't know where I'd find the time. I'd be sleeping less probably without moving closer to work, I don't think so. Oh. Yeah. But your commuter time is when you edit, so you need that as well. Otherwise you'd I'd be editing. I'd use editing. that time anyway, yeah. Okay. So, but okay. Um, I just want to test that then. Is it the longer days and shorter nights that are giving you the stress and hold? No. Oh, okay. okay. So I amazing, thought you had it then. Yeah, amazing stamina and your lifestyle set up. All the things I thought it was. Yeah. But you were weaker with the unpredictability. Mm, uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And when we did a live yesterday, that was a bit nerve wracking, wasn't it? That is true. Yeah. I think that is probably what gives me most anxiety about it, is especially filming with new people, not knowing where I'm going in London and stuff. Amazing that you do yeah. it. You're so brave. You're so good. I just don't think, I, I try not to think through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you are. Thank you. Um, anything else you want me to test? What else could it be? Um, maybe like the feeling of not doing enough, like the feeling I could do more of ah, like other things. There's always that feeling, even yeah. if even if you had a million subscribers. <laughs> There'd always be that feeling of I yeah. could do more. I, so I, don't beat yourself up about <laughs> it. You you do Thank amazingly. You. Um, okay, so should we test that the feeling of not doing enough? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So is it a feeling of not doing enough and hold? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't think that's just with YouTube though. Just professionally, like in general, I feel like I could oh. do more. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But that, that's a good thing. It means I can work harder. Yeah, but not if it's going to add to your stress. Because okay. we need to be content and, you know, we need to be happy where we are right now. Like, mm. I am me. I am enough. I, I am happy as a whole person right now, this minute. I don't need that, 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 that. Um. I am complete right now standing on these two feet right now okay yeah i think i think you might have got it there <laughs> okay yeah no there's so many things to do still and even at your beautiful tender young age you are enough right now you don't need to be double your age and have double the uh, awards or whatever it is you know you, you, you're beautiful and whole right now and that's the same for everyone watching as well. <laughs> okay, okay, so we've found some here. I'm going to make some notes now so I don't forget where okay. I am with it. There were three that failed earlier, weren't there? What was the very first one? Or oh, the amount that you have on, the busyness. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Busyness. Um, and predictability and to be enough. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now we're going to do some NLP. Okay. So, uh, and it's very simple and very quick, but um, in order to do this, um, you would need to think of something that could have happened this morning or it could have happened when you were very little at any time that may have affected you and you think may still be living in you to a certain extent. Um, so it's this is called trauma release. So a trauma can be the smallest thing of having lost someone in a shopping mall compared to something very very bad or this this or a, a tiny thing like losing your favorite pen you know okay but it all depends how it sits with you and sometimes we can feel those traumas and they 
sit in the body. They can even sit in a particular place like an organ and we can feel like a loss in our heart or a loss in our liver, in our kidneys, sometimes in our abdomen and it can affect the workings of that system of the body. Okay. So uh, can you think of anything at all that we could help check to see if it's affecting you and get rid of it? Yeah. 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 You don't have to say what it is unless okay. you wanted to. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this one. Yeah. I think like losing, I don't know if it counts, like losing contact or like unintentionally cutting off certain friends maybe. Okay. And always, like I see people in my dreams a lot that I'm sad that I lost contact with sometimes from like a fight or sometimes from like just lack of content a uh, contact but I always find those things stay with me more than actually more like what is usually considered traumatic things right okay it's always things to do with friends and people so okay yeah. oh okay yeah. so was there a particular event that could epitomize this feeling in you yeah okay so so for me that's good because we need to uh, latch on to a particular event okay so now we're going to do the nlp if you could keep your head dead center okay and if you could look top left so that's your left up there left. and give me that little finger and thumb again which is called opponent's polysis okay and you don't need to think about the event right now you're just holding your eyes top left with your, your face in the center yeah and hold okay that's strong move your eyes to middle left and hold that's also strong and bottom left and hold wonderful really good so far so can you move your eyes head dead center to bottom right Hold. Okay, here we go. And then to middle right and hold. Strong. And to top right and hold. Okay, just fractionally opened, but the worst one was down here. So this is an area that concerns um, feelings. Okay, okay. Um, so this is something that would be really good to get out of you and it'll be really obvious if we can get rid of it and then we'll retest just what was weak at the end. Okay. So I'm now going to ask you to keep your head absolutely dead centre. I'm going to put one hand over the other and on my two palms visualise a screen. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to visualise something. I'm not going to ask you to talk or say anything. Um, but I would like your head to stay dead centre, but your eyes to follow the screen of my hands. Okay? okay? So I'd like you to think about the event that we've talked about. And the hands may well be blurry, but that's absolutely normal and fine because there needs to be some distortion there. And then just follow my palms and picture the event. And first of all, picture who was there and what you could see. And now think about what you could hear and any sounds, voices, and conversation. Keep focused. Gone. <laughs> oh, that scared me. Mm, it's supposed to scare you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. We need to get it out of you with that. Oh, you look a little bit. Are you okay? It's okay. Yeah. So now we're going to retest. So can you look bottom right with your head dead center, finger and thumb and hold. So strong. And the other one was top right and hold. 
really strong and I'm really pulling. I mean, quite often when I come back to a test that had been weak, I really give it a good test. And it's the same as at the end of the core therapy mm. because I want to really uh, prove to you, to your body, to the viewers that it, I'm really pulling there and, and testing that previous weak test to the max. Yeah. So I think that might have really helped you because there was something going on there that was really weak and it was so obvious compared to the other tests. Yeah. Oh. How do you feel? Yes, it was scary. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't yeah. warn you about it. Yeah, so, then I'd know. So, um, so that is NLP. Right. And that sequence is called, called Eyes in Distortion, EID eyes in distortion so it needs to be blurry right. you know um, and you need to be in that zone of picturing an event or a trauma that has happened and then you need that bang on the couch and the word gone in order to clear it okay. uh, yeah and oh. then the retest just proves it wow. okay so I'm going to put the couch back down now okay can you bend a knee? Can you raise the knee off the couch? I'm going to push and hold. Okay. And the other side. Raise it up and hold. Okay. So hardly any strength there, Melissa. I'm just going to have a little feel of your C2. Just relax, relax, relax. That's it. Yeah, so that's quite caught and tight there. I definitely need to give you a good long neck stretch today and neck release. So I'm just having a little feel between our Chinese massage into the glutes, the lumbar. Feel what the spine is telling me. Yeah, quite tight here between shoulder blades, quite low, low down. using the heel of my hands to really work around the edge of each vertebrae, bouncing them, making sure they're springing back. movement softening up already mm, it's quite tight here and I can tell because when I push the whole area moves rather than just the vertebrae scapula Beautiful colour top, lovely lemony colour. So I'm using the weight and movement of the pelvis to help me work on the spine. So as the pelvis is rocking with a lovely gravity movement to it, beautiful momentum, 
I'm using that to help me work as it comes one way, I'm pushing the other way into the spine to help free up each vertebra so they're not fixated to the vertebra above and below it. So they move independently with softness and fluidity. the kidneys an extra little massage just above the waist going to do a little wing stretch to try and open up this area between the scapulae just relaxing the arm circling out the shoulder pulling at the angel wing and stretching down. Isolating around the toe pad. And then down from the kidney and adrenal to the bladder. And then supporting the foot, pushing in and raising the opposite hip by using this leg as a lever and this will reset and re-pattern the alignment of the pelvis. reflexology terms, down the th thyroid and then over in the instep, the kidney to the bladder and then into the solar plexus onto kidney two and a beautiful pelvic alignment, sweeping the leg across the couch, lovely, just check that pelvic alignment and relax, 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 that's better, looking much more aligned, okay and now just for a little sacral float. Okay. 
open up first the energy, the touch, the pressure does tune into the breath and then it works way beyond the movement of the breath working into creating some balance and calmness coming back to a beautiful tranquil level it's almost like at first there's too much going on there's a busyness and as the sacral float progresses the feeling goes beyond that busyness to a very calm homeostasis that foundational level of function just so calm feels amazing. Okay, Melissa, take a couple of deep breaths before coming back into the room and when you're ready you can turn over. or weakness so we did find some origin and insertion weakness there earlier in the kinesiology tests at the start but I also want to bring some warmth and circulation some softness into the muscle group picking it up and rolling it better, some warmth there and as I do I don't want to miss out the other leg so just having a little feel oh it feels much sturdier this side maybe it needs a bit of tween arm feels a bit tight using my thumbs around the edge, the sides edge of those quads those muscles will feel very different one from the other. Does the left feel quite different when I'm treating it to the right? Yeah. yeah. This one feels sort of sturdier. It's a bit ticklish. It's more ticklish. But I think that's my brain's way of oh, comprehending yeah. the yeah. difference. Yeah. They feel more aligned now. That's good. Okay. So I'm just going to come up and work on your neck.
relax, relax, let the head naturally tilt backwards. Lovely. Really relax and breathe, let go of any tension. It's wonderful. Stretching the shoulder down to relieve both shoulder and neck. off with a little temporal and occiput qigong cranial balancing.
Okay, so you're back with me, yeah? So, uh, we're just going to redo some kinesiology, just the couple that weren't as strong as they could have been earlier. So I've just made a note of what they are. There was the dehydration right at the start, so I'm just going to ask for this arm and this leg together and hold really strong, say on this side and hold really strong and then I'll go for opposites and hold really strong not even an effort and hold slightly that's come up for new so that was strong earlier I'm just going to have a little see what could be causing that just check the shoulder give me this arm nice and straight and hold yeah it's not the shoulder give me an elbow don't mean give me an elbow, do that again. And hold. That's alright. And hold. Okay, something with the wrist. And hold. Hips okay. Checking the knee. And hold. Knees okay. Checking the ankle. And hold. Fine. So, with this wrist, just going to put it in different positions and hold, yeah, I'm going to twist it in and hold, oh no you don't like that mm -hmm. at all, and hold, mm -hmm. tiny mm -hmm. bit, so it's the twist of your left hand, you're not left handed, mm -hmm. but there's something you do with your left hand where you twist it, ah, oh. With your cameras, you do a lot of this, don't yeah, you? And yeah. I wonder if it's not just yeah. your fingers that are twisting, but maybe your wrist. Yeah. And it's the inward that's worse, and the outward is not great. Yeah. So there's something you're doing, maybe you're overusing it or straining yeah. it, or it could be carrying bags or the weight, or maybe you've sprained it a little bit. Okay. Um, you may not have any symptoms at the moment, but you would have done if you hadn't have had a core treatment, you know, it would have come up. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a little TLC. Okay. It's amazing how many new things can come up, don't Yeah, you see, because we did this test and this one, that tells me about the jaw, the mm -hmm. jaw hinge, the TMJ, okay. and that one had come up mm. on your left-hand side. I treated it, mm. I came back and I retested that contralateral test, and they went strong at the time, mm. and I thought the joints were all going to be okay because those had gone strong, mm. but it's obviously come up. because. Sometimes it's like peeling the layers of an onion. Um, this is the wrist is obviously not too bad a problem mm. because other more serious things have shouted louder. Right, so it's just lowering the layers of mm -hmm. things to come mm -hmm. up. And depending on the day, the high up ones will be different. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving it a little mini tweenar here with my thumbs. And then I'm just going to do a little bit, while I'm supporting it, I'm just going to do a little bit of mobilising. It's my way of just assessing and checking what's going on inside as well. Oh yeah, that's clearing. There was some crunching there, some clicking. Mm, that feels a lot better. Okay. Okay, we're just going to retest that. Give me your arm and hold. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, yes. And 
hold. Fine. Okay. So that was your ipses, your contras. Now your left quad, if you could bend this knee. I'm going to put a lot of pressure this way and you keep it bent and hold. Okay, it's moving slightly. Mm. So do you remember we worked on the origin and insertion? So I'm just going to give that another little few seconds on there. Oh, I felt something then. What did you feel? It felt like something, something went downwards. I don't know. Just like a, maybe a release of tension or something. Oh, nice, okay. It yeah, it was nice. Then I'm just going to give it a little tweener. Let's do it again. I'm going to push here and hold. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm putting my full body weight against that. So that felt very different as well, holding it. Oh. Like it just felt stronger. Okay. So you know what to do to that now yourself. Yeah, here. I'll press here because I definitely felt something. Mm. And you'll get to know exactly where to press because, of course, there's four muscles there, they're quads. Um, okay, now, the NLP stroke kinesiology for stress. We looked at three where your right hand opponent's polysis came apart earlier. Um, if I could have that one again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just rest your elbow down. And we're going to check, um, is... Now let's just mind you. I should keep the, I should keep it the same because we want to do exactly the same test. Okay, is the reason for stress busyness and hold? Okay, is the reason for stress the unpredictability and hold? Ah, okay, so that still is. Um, and what was the third one? Not doing enough. Is the reason for stress not doing enough? And hold. Okay, so those two still are. So what I want to do with you now is an affirmation. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give you the affirmation and by all means take it into, write it down, have it in, I don't know if you have a handbag, but have it in or have it in your desk at work or mm. have it on the bathroom mirror and see the words and believe it. Okay. okay? So. It can be, I am capable, so that's for the busyness. Mm. It means I can cope with change, that's for the unpredictability. And for the, um, I am enough, I am capable, I can cope with change, I am enough. Okay. Capable, I can cope with change, I am enough. Or just pick one that resonates the I most. Am I am enough. I can feel that one sitting the most uncomfortable. Okay, so I want you to repeat I am enough three times. So embarrassing. <laughs> okay. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. And now we're going to retest it. Is the reason for stress not being enough and hold? And I'm yeah, really that pulling. Is, that is weird. Yeah. That is weird. <laughs> we'll say that like more times. So what's happening here is your subconsciousness is saying, that's what I need. That has made all the difference from feeling like you can't cope, feeling that you're not enough, that there's always something more you can do, yeah. to it doesn't matter who you are right here, right now, is the beautiful Melissa that you really are, and you are enough now. Okay. So is it best to say those quite often then? Yeah, have them on the mirror, in, on, on, on your screen, you know, yeah. just, or just I am enough. Or if you don't want people on the train to see it on your screen, just put I, A, E, and you will know mm. that that means I am enough. Yeah. Okay? okay, and so when you see I A E, you just get this whoosh of yes, I am enough. Okay, that's, that's so strange. So, yeah. so folks can try it at home as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so 
Thank you. My pleasure. So I've really enjoyed treating you. It's been quite a long core therapy today, and I've done a lot of talking. I'm sorry about that. No, no, I love the talking. Like, personally, for me, I, I really enjoyed the session with all your explanations because I learned so much from that. Okay. Yeah. It'll be, I'm sure if you come back again, it'll all be different again. It'll yeah, be something, it'll be something else. new. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure, darling. Thank you.